Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing okay, Jared. How are you doing tonight? I'm not going to complain. Uh, so, Kyle, we have a lot to get to. We have a lot to get to. I mean, not, not, do we? Hold on, do we? Kind of, kind of, kind of, but it is, it is. It's no Rutgers. Yep. Uh, I don't know. You have the notes. That's, that's, that's fair gangland. Uh, I do have notes, but here's the thing. Here's what I want you to know about notes. Our long, the longest notes we've written so far this year were for Toledo. Like, <laughs> You you write down a bunch of notes, and that's actually a bad sign. That one was a barn burner. I know, that's that, that that's my point. Is that the better like our our notes against Wisconsin not very long. The better the team, the more you can like naturally talk about them. The less notes you need, you just like you lot like there's like I mean technically like the Wisconsin notes may have been longer, but that's just because I pasted a bunch of stats in for reference you know what i mean like it's it's rutgers like well what, what do you want me to say other than hey it's rutgers uh ohio state's favored by 40 the 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 win predictor over espn.com has ohio state at like a 98.3 percent chance of winning which i think hold on let me let me look it up Um, not high enough. That's what Kyle said. And I, yeah, I, I, I agree. I said that he doesn't understand stats. Uh, I do the, understand <laughs> stats. I'm the stats guy, Jared. You weren't showing it. Stats. You weren't showing it. So hold on. Let me pull I, up I, Arkansas state and Toledo real quick for reference. Uh, do they still have the win? Uh, they don't still have the win predictor up. Okay. never mind. Um, okay. Well, I guess the win probability started out 98.3 against Arkansas state that is, and the win predictor was 98.4 for Toledo. So, so there Toledo's you go. A better team. Toledo is a better team than Rutgers. No, uh, other, other way, Kyle, Ohio state was a 10th higher of a percent therefore Cleo is worse don't don't think about it too hard kyle no no but but this okay all right whatever <laughs> uh, whatever all right let's let's get into let's get into the uh our notes here jared so scarlet knights i say i have the colors right here three and one coming into this game uh losing last weekend to uh to iowa uh more on iowa and on friday's game um yeah this this rutgers game this Rutgers team here on friday's show yeah friday's show okay. um this Rutgers team jared now i feel like i'm saying deja vu here because i feel like this is the third week in a row we're gonna we're gonna say this and this is one of those instances where you know the the stats aren't really all true <laughs> but it seems like there's a third weekend in a row yeah. the house state is playing a and i'm doing air quotes here a top tier defense yeah uh toledo was a top 10 defense going into that game wisconsin i believe was a top 10 defense going into that game and you know what kyle i don't know if you know this or not notre dame was tied for first in yards allowed going into that game Damn. Damn, Jared. Did not know that. <laughs> That's because uh, you don't yeah, understand I, stats, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, shut up. Uh, <laughs> Rutgers coming into this game, again, based on the metrics here, is the ninth best total defense in the country. And Buckeye Zach, who, by the way, is our guest picker, so we'll hear from Buckeye Zach later. Um, asks a very important question. Who has Rutgers played besides Iowa? All right. So week one, they play, they went to Boston college. Okay. Where they won 22 to 21. Okay. Then they, then they played Wagner. Five they bucks. 60, 
Six five bucks if anyone seven. can tell me what state uh, Wagner's in. <laughs> or Georgia. they won. Uh, or they won sixty-six Rafael, to seven. Gangland said Georgia pretty quickly, but then, but then Buckeye Esquire immediately said New York. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I, you you said pure guess. Now I, now you don't get the five dollars. If you had pretended the, the six, like you knew, I would have given you five dollars. The, the sixty six to seven score seems to be maybe what this this game could be. Maybe more on that later. And then their third game, they went on the road to Temple, where they beat them sixteen to fourteen, and then lost last weekend to Iowa twenty seven to ten. Now, how can you claim to be a top ten defense and allow Iowa to score twenty seven points on you? To be fair. Yes. To be yeah, fair, yeah. I, I may have they're, set you up for offense. this one. I may have set you up for this one, Kyle. <laughs> their offense only scored seven points. Only seven? Yep. I think it, I think their it, offense scored seven point. Offense scored seven. Okay. Defense scored 14. Mm -hmm. Their special team scored six points. Are you are you counting the field goals as special teams? Because I feel yes. like that's still offense. Yes. No, it's special teams. Offense didn't score the points. I feel like that's ticky tacky, but we'll we'll move forward. It fits my narrative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's the sort of integrity and honesty we bring you here. When <laughs> we are we are honest about our lack of integrity, which is m more than <laughs> most can say. So yeah, definitely to answer your question. Yeah, definitely not a top talent offensively that they've they've faced here but hey they're three and one coming into october jared that's that's something for rutgers right it is i mean like legitimately like we we say that with a bit of a a, a tongue in cheek but you yeah gotta, you I gotta mean, win against you gotta win against an out of conference uh power five opponent boston college yep um a mid-tier temple team and, mid, and then your loss mid, was an in it was an in conference Iowa team. By mid tier, do you just mean that they're literally in a group of five conference? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I, uh, I was I was considering fighting you on calling Temple mid tier, but okay. But, now that we understand each new. other. What else is new? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, but again, like it's Rutgers, and like we understand that the opponents have not been good, and as good as Iowa may or may not be. Again, more on that in the Friday episode. The fact of the matter is, is that Iowa's offense is hot fucking garbage. We can yeah. say that, right? It's hot garbage. So they've not faced a proper offense yet. Like the best offense they've played to this point, I think inarguably is Boston College. And I mean, Iowa. That's not Iowa saying had, a lot. Iowa had, even though they won by 17 points, <laughs> they had... 277 total yards on offense. Let's talk about let's talk about yards. Um if we compare defensive stats. So if mm -hmm. we if we compare Rutgers versus Ohio State on defensive stats. Um yep. yards per play allowed, Rutgers 4.4, Ohio State 4.6, advantage Rutgers. Opponents rushing yards uh, Rutgers allowed 2.2 per rush, Ohio State 3.4 yards per rush. Jim Knowles, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> passing play, Ohio State gets the slight advantage this time. Uh, Rutgers giving up 7.2 per pass, Ohio State giving up 6.6 .6 per pass. Uh, third down conversion rate, uh, uh, Rutgers is allowing 27.5, Ohio State allowing 30 percent these are all pretty in the same area now again we can talk about quality of opponent and granted granted quality of opponent absolutely should should come into play here uh that being said if we if we if we take all of those uh efficiency numbers and we we turn them over to the offense kyle the equation changes a tad <laughs> Just a tad. Yeah, Ohio State doubling 
almost doubling yards per play, 4.4 yards per play to 8.2 rushing yards. Ohio State's getting nearly two yards advantage per rush Uh, Rutgers at 4.0 Ohio State at 5.9 and the passing play, the passing play. Oh, my goodness. Ohio State uh, getting 11 yards per pass attempt. Rutgers at 5.3. Wow, I didn't realize it was that good, Jared. 11? 11. 11. Damn. Yeah. So if we, by the way, I also have uh, points per play here. Ohio State, for every play that they run, scores a seventh of a point. Uh, For every play that Rutgers runs, they get uh, about a quarter. Almost almost a quarter. quarter. Almost a quarter. You're rounding up to give them a quarter. So basically... (laughs) Hey, you know, basically you're talking seven, seven cents for against like 23 cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Honestly, uh, I thought our third down conversion rate was lower. Gangland. Um, I feel like if we did the math to cut that down to garbage time or to remove garbage time. I feel like it would be. Um, Wisconsin would beat Rutgers by 35. This is Esquire saying this and would have rushed 400 yards. Um, I, I can't co-sign either of that. I think you're exaggerating on both, but I, your point, your overall point is still taken. Well, here's, here's, here's something. Let's, let's mention some names here, Jared. So, Coming into the season, Rutgers is without their starting quarterback, uh, Noah Vedral, and their starting running back, Aaron Young. So they're without yeah. their two starters since the beginning of the year. So Which income, helps explain. Yeah, no starting backfield, yes. That, <laughs> uh, so Evan, Evan Simon is taking the helm in the quarterback position, and then you have Kyle um, Monagai. I'm going to pronounce that wrong. Uh, who's who's the main running back to fill in for Aaron Young? Yeah, and um, yeah, it's and, and and you you see in the in the numbers here too. Uh, yeah, it's you can tell that there's talent missing there, and that it, it's hard it's it's hard to to come up with uh, numbers when you don't have your quarterback and or your running back for the year so far. Austin says, I'm going to mispronounce that wrong. I mean, duh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that that should be one of the rules, Austin. You're correct. I'm going to pronounce this wrong ellipses. Uh, (laughs) Z Spike says, just a little bit of rain. Uh, He's our Florida correspondent. Z Spike says, "Um, I'm I'm glad that you're spending, and I'm willing to joke because he already told me he's fine. So just for the record, I already know he's fine. When I'm making this joke, uh, spikes, I'm really glad you're spending your life last night on earth with us. It's appreciated. (laughs) I'm also fine. In case you were wondering, Austin, you're yeah, you're, I I guess it is. It is going to get up into Georgia a bit, I guess. Um, it's going to be like a tropical storm by the time I live in Florida now, guy, but you're still like on the border though. You're nowhere near Tampa. It is going. It is going northeast, though. Austin, Either quit way. try. Quit hey, trying hey, to. Hey guys, guys, good job, good job, Austin. You got you got Jared to talk about weather. Good I think, Spi- I think spikes. Hey, I bye. think spikes. <laughs> I, actually, I think spikes did that. <laughs> Listen, we either Team talk effort. about hurricanes or we talk Sweet. about Rutgers, and I'm not even Sweet talking cat, about cat effort. Yeah. <laughs> We did it. Yes. All right. Uh, back, back to Rutgers here, Jared. <laughs> yeah. If you were wondering, by the way, hey, um, Wisconsin, what happened to didn't didn't they ever they didn't have very good wide receivers this 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 game? Didn't they used to have a guy by the name of Kirk Shank? Um, yeah, he he plays for Rutgers now. He does, and he's are by far their leading um, production uh, person for the uh, wide receivers. He leads the team 18 receptions, and I think that next person is eight. 
156 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, and then, yeah, it it's him and then everybody else. So that's that's going to be, if you're looking for a playmaker well, for Rutgers, that, that's going to be the guy to watch is, uh, is Aaron number one. Well, I, playmaker, maybe. Um, if you need a first down, for sure. Um, playmaker might be uh, Jones or Long, their other two wide receivers. I don't know if it's 100% fair to be like, and everybody else, um, because despite the fact that those two guys don't have the same number of receptions or yards uh, as Kirk Shank does, they are uh, carrying pretty heavy averages, um, especially Long, who has 22.5 yards per play or per reception. Excuse, excuse me. He um, only has four, four receptions, though. <laughs> for 90 yards. <laughs> 90 yards yes i'm just saying it's 2.2 or excuse me 22.5 per reception versus kirk shank at 8.7 mm -hmm. yep but I, i'm honestly not worried about this this offense here i i think i should be able just to stop them in their tracks and i'd be i'd be surprised or I, I, I actually, I'd be disappointed if if Rutgers scored more than fourteen points in this game. I agree with that statement, um, especially if we're talking like, yeah, exactly, Gangland against the starters. Preface that, yeah. I mean, Ohio State starters only gave up fourteen last week, but we saw that the final score ended up being twenty-one, right? Um. So, I mean, I I do not expect, I actually kind of expect, and of course, there's always stupid things like turnovers that can lead to good field position. Um, so it's, it's always hard to predict this, but I kind of feel like Rutgers doesn't score in the first half. That that's where I'm at with this. Maybe they get one in the second half against the starters. Maybe the starters are being a little bit lax. Um, but outside of that, I I don't see this offense moving the ball against Ohio State at all. And isn't it nice? Oh, my God. Isn't it nice to be able to say that? It is. Because we couldn't say that against anyone last year. Then Grandpa Knowles will tear them a new one on Sunday. See, that's the thing. I kind of want him to give up a cheap. I kind of want the starters to give up a cheap uh, third quarter touchdown. Just, you know, something to improve on, right? Like the seven minute mark in the fourth versus whiskey, something like that. Although I don't think you're going to see the starters enter the fourth quarter at all in this game. God, I hope not. Uh, yeah, if it weren't for. I'm not reading the rest of that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> all right, defense, Jared, on the defensive side, who's who, who should you look out for on this Rutgers defensive front? Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, you have a uh, Christian is Ian um, Christian is Ian is kind of their star on the defensive side that he kind of plays in that. No, is Ian. I'm almost certain is Ian is the correct, correct pronunciation on that. And if you're going to tell me I'm wrong, Austin, uh, tell me how to spell it or how to pronounce it. <laughs> Uh, Christian is uh, leads the team in tackles leads the team in solo tackles leads the team in tackle assist uh, is one. He's in a uh, third place for the most sacks on the team. Uh, this guy's all over the field. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and yeah, he's a, he's a defensive back, so he's he's all over the field. He's kind of like their silver bullet or rover or whatever what do you whatever you want to name that position. Just like Jared said, all over the field. Um, there there is another uh, these defensive back um, that's putting up a lot of big numbers here. It's uh, Robert uh, Long Longerbeam. Uh, 
leads the team uh, with um, interceptions. He has two, and as well as has uh, 14 tackles as a defensive back as well. Definitely a guy you want to keep an eye on if you're trying to throw it in his direction. Zach says, but he can't cover our wide receivers. Uh, I think he's probably, I, I don't 100% know how Rutgers uses their bullet, uh, but I, as a bullet-esque position, I would see him covering Stover and or the slot wide receiver, just depending upon the defense. Um, so that would probably be Stover and Emeka Abuka. Um, and no, I don't think you can stay with Emeka Abuka. I just don't think most people can. If I'm no. just being straight with you, and and for the record, I I don't expect JSN to play in this game. I think yep. just for yeah, just in case in case that needs to be said out loud, I'm not expecting it. No. Uh, you might see some other guys who are like, oh hey, he might play. They'll they might not play this game. I mean that's just, me being real with you. Uh, they they might take a they might take a look at this game and be like. Any backups want to get in? That might that, that might be the conversation here. Yeah. But Wouldn't be surprised definitely. to see maybe Mike Hall take another week off. Wouldn't be surprised to, you know, if one of those corners is like so-so and maybe ready to come back, but maybe not ready to come back. Maybe they don't come back. Oh, that would we'll be see. nice. Yeah. It would be nice to have a, one of the better corners out there for Kirkshank. Um, the other the other person actually is a pretty decent decent player on Rutgers defensive front. Uh, Aaron Lewis, um, big disruptive player um, for the Rutgers defensive end position here. Uh, has not not a ton of stats, but so far, but definitely a a, um, a difference maker to disrupt some plays as well. If you're looking for anybody on the defensive front. Yeah, uh, and at the linebackers, you have uh, Dion Jennings and Tyreen Powell, um, second and third in total tackles on the team, um, second and third in assisted tackles on the team. Jennings is the second uh, highest solo tackle getter on the team. Uh, Powell has uh, two sacks on the year already, so you might see him keep an eye on on Stroud because he's kind of played that position a bit in the past where he's kind of the QB spy. Uh, not that Stroud ever really seems all that interested in running, but since Stroud is someone who likes to scramble around the pocket a lot, you could still use a spy to get in there and potentially pick him up on a rollout or pick him up on a scramble. So uh, that might be a, a position you see Pal playing this week. Uh, I think uh, I think one will be back this week. I'll oh, talk about the defensive backs. I also think we're going to shop the portal for DBs this offseason. Uh, probably. Probably. Yes. Just yes. Lo lost some guys to the portal. So they're a bit thin. Um, the good news is, is that the young guys are all coming along great. So, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Well, you know, you just kind of have to see, like, Cam Brown will leave. Denzel Burke won't. Um, I, I think isn't I don't I think Cam Brown. Uh, can you take someone back who transferred out? Well, you, it's a one time transfer role. So that would make it difficult. You'd have to find some sort of legal exception to let them grad transfer. None of them are that old. Most of the guys who left were like third year players. So they would have to be pretty far along in their degree to, to graduate. They'd have mm -hmm. to be doing the four year degree in three years thing, which like Joe Burrow did that, but you don't, you don't see that too often. Joe Burrow is also insanely intelligent. So that's just, it's not an easy thing to do on top of being a football player. Yeah. Anything else? Any other any other players you wanna you wanna mention here before we go into our our picks here? Um, no, I think I think we named most of their impact players. Um, sadly, <laughs> <laughs> guys, right, we're trying well, trackers. All right, all right, we'll we'll jump into our picks here. So, uh, Jared mentioned earlier today, uh, this week's picker is Buckeye Zach. 
who's also in our chat here, and he will um he he sent us his picks here, so we'll we'll jump right into it. Uh, Ohio State player to watch, Jared. Is there one one player to watch out for for Ohio State that's going to make a big big splash in this game? Um, I'm going to go Henderson. I feel like we've seen Williams carry, mine Williams carry the the bulk of the carries, get a bulk of the yards. Um, I, I think maybe it's time for Henderson to to do that. I feel like maybe Henderson's sitting there going, "Hey, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be RB one." And maybe there's a bit of a, okay, what am I doing wrong coming right now for, uh, I think, I think end of year Henderson is going to be scary in, in, you know, given his injuries, they might just kind of be saving him for the end of year, but I'm also think he's mid development. Um, but here, here's what I'm seeing right now. If I'm being really honest in regards to Henderson, um, I don't think he, uh, he he reminds me a little bit of J.K. Dobbins, his sophomore year. We saw J.K. Dobbins be amazing as a freshman, s- kind of slide off as a sophomore, and then, you know, rise back up and be an amazing junior. Yeah. Uh, Gangland says he's missing his reads. Austin says sophomore slump. A little bit of both. But yeah, I think he has a bit of that thing that J.K. Dobbins was doing, where because he's in this running back battle and because they're, you know, kind of doing the hot hand thing. I think he's trying to break some runs right wide open instead of just following his blockers. And Mayan's doing a better job just following his blockers, which is why his average is so much higher. Yeah. Um, but maybe someone's gotten into Henderson's ear about that. Maybe Henderson follows the playbook a little bit more. And we see Henderson have his game and this could be a huge game for Henderson. Yeah, I, I, I think this, is, you're going to see as much as I want to see more of the running game, which I've been very, very pleased seeing this year. What, what was the number that I saw you post here, Jared? Ohio State's rushed the ball 55% of the time, which you wouldn't really think about it based on the offense that Ohio State has this year. But I, I think Ohio State's going Gar- to pass. Garbage time's kind of skewing that number. Yeah, true. But I think I think we're going to see a lot more passing in this one. Get um get just a little bit more playing experience here. But I have here, Jared, my player to watch. He has three, three of the four games this year. He has had over a hundred reception yards and a touchdown and at least one touchdown in every single game this this year so far. Nope, not okay. Marv. I got Ibuka. I got Ibuka as my player to watch. He's 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 pretty much um Stroud's go-to person here. Six receptions last week, seven against Toledo. He had four against Arkansas State, but everybody played in that one. And then he had nine against Notre Dame. Definitely uh Stroud's favorite target to to throw to. I think he'll have another 100 plus yard game, at least one touchdown in this one, maybe more, maybe he'll go off in this one. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to stick with uh, this year's uh, number two, Ibuka. Yeah, I think with Ibuka, because, okay, so like at the beginning of the year, we were sort of thinking like, Marv on the outside, on the other side, you'd have like Julian Fleming and Emeka Ibuka splitting time. And then at the slot, you'd have JSN. But with JSN not uh, being healthy, what they've essentially done is just Abuka, who was already probably more comfortable in the slot anyway. That's probably already his better position. Slide Abuka in. And, you know, hey, I don't want to say. Hey, hey Stover, you, you've been playing pretty well. Come on. Come on out here and join the wide receivers. Well, you know, when you're when you're. Tight ends catching the ball as well as Stover is that just allows you to stay, you know, in an 11 personnel instead of, you know, needing to bring in a second tight end or whatever else. Yep. All right. Um, You didn't write down here. Did, did Buckeye Zach have a player to watch for Ohio State? 
He gave us one for Wisconsin. I don't think he gave us one for Ohio State. Do you? Uh, but he's down there in the chat. Who do you, who do you got? Fleming. That was another name I was kind of playing around with because I wanted to choose a wide receiver in this game. But by the way, he does kind of say that in his. He doesn't. He doesn't explicitly say it, but it does. It does fit with his uh, his game prediction coming up here. All right, Rutgers player of to watch for. Christian is Ian. Uh, we I already talked about him. He is leading the he's leading basically all of the stats for the for the Rutgers defense. Um, again, sort of their do it all bullet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that that's huge because he's basically the third linebacker on the field. He'll have containment responsibilities a lot of the times on those run plays. Uh, he will be in pass coverage a lot, you know, specifically trying either Abuka or Cade Stover, trying to slow them down. So it's. If he has a good game. And quite frankly, I think if Rutgers ends up scoring early, it'll, it will might be because of him. Because they're going to need a turnover or something, something to get them in good field position. So I'm I'm thinking it has to be on the defense. I think it kind of eh, it doesn't have to be. But I, I think I think the, the biggest intrigue here, because Rutgers offense is not going to score a lot of points. If Rutgers, I think, stands any sort of chance at winning, I think it has to come from the defense. And I think the leader of this defense is uh, Christian is Ian. Yeah, that's that is the answer, Jared. But I'll, Rutgers I'll has game. no chance. Austin says, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll pick somebody else here. I'll go with um, Aaron uh, uh, Crookshank. If, if Rutgers is wanting to somewhat make this a reasonable game. Uh, he's going to, he's going to have to make some plays here. So I'll, I'll go with, uh, go with Aaron. All right. Kirk Shank. Um, uh, Kirk Shank is prime coverage, but explosive play candidate. I had the choice of camping or Ohio state Rutgers. You lobbied for camping. I can't say I blame you. <laughs> All right, uh, key matchup for this game, Jared. Is there really one? I think it's. I'm. I'll. I'll stick with my guns here and go. Is Ian versus Abuka? I think is probably, mm -hmm. is is where I'll go with with you on this. Uh, Austin says Rutgers nose guard against the interior of the offensive line. He, he's gonna lose. Well, I mean. They're all going to lose, but you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, my key matchup, just no one get hurt. No injuries. <laughs> That's <laughs> no that is injuries. not a key matchup. <laughs> By the way, uh, we got a we got a submission from Zach on this one. He also says Christian is in against uh, whoever he must cover. And he okay. also had Zian for the yeah. enemy player. There, there, to watch. There's the matchup. Uh, Austin Austin fit it for me here. Ohio State versus health. Listen, you gave me shit for saying. I know. I know. A defensive tackle versus the interior of the offensive line. Or no, a defensive end versus the. Ta You're not I going know. Ohio State versus health. I know. You expect. Uh, don't say that, Kabuto. Don't put that out into the world like that. Jeez, Kabuto. Does Shiano try a fake punt again? Maybe. Might as, might as well. <laughs> I mean, an onside kick, maybe? I what Whatever. I mean, it, it worked great for Scott Frost. Kyle, key matchup. I was trying to kill some time for you. Do you think of something? <laughs> key matchup. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to I'm just going to say I'll, I'll just stick with uh, Aaron as well. Just limit his touches, limit, uh, limit his um, play, ba play making abilities here. So, so I would say. 
So just sure. the our DB our DBs versus uh, Aaron. All right. Yeah, he got paid fifteen million for it. Uh, maybe he'll go crazy and do an onside punt. Is that a is that a thing? That is not a thing. Is that is not a. Thing. I mean, it, it could be. So I mean, if. If you, I mean, you could try to punt it in such a way that it hits one of the other team's defenders. I mean, it's I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you're like, oh, hey, that guy covering the punt. Or uh, not covering the punt, the, the guy that's covering the guy that's covering the punt, the guy who's covering the gunners. I'm going to try and hit him with the ball. I mean. I don't know how you do that. Why don't really Aussie don't. kickers do that? Real talk, because it's I, how would you do that in any way that is in e, even a regular onside kick has like a f four or five percent possible Austin. Yes, it is possible. But is it repeatable? Forget forget possible. Anything's possible. Humans developing a complex system of interconnected computers from the primordial ooze of the earth a billion years ago is possible. It's just unfucking likely. I'm not asking is an onside punt possible. I'm asking, is it repeatable? All right. The spread here, Jared, the spread is Ohio state by 40 and a half. It's a lot of points. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry, I was still reading the chat. Ooh, ooh. I was still reading All the right. chat. 40 and a half, and the over under for this game is 59 points. 59. So, See, I went, I, I tried to do a 59 last week, and I felt gross by not being gross. So I'm back on my shit this week. But do you want to go first? No, Austin, that's, that's minus 10 nice, not plus 10. It's technically minus 10 nice. Either way, uh, I'll go first here. Uh, I'll take the over in this one. Uh, I will take I will take Ohio State uh, to cover the 40 and a half. And I will actually take the over under. I would, I would take I would take the over 59 total points for the game. I agree. I think Ohio State scores 59 points in this game. One percent <laughs> battery gang unite. <laughs> oh boy right. i'm so I'm Jared, glad Jared your phone I... is spending its last moments on earth with us <laughs> all right so jared and i pick ohio state to cover the 40 and a half points what does buckeye zach say all right i'm gonna do buckeye zach's entire thing here um all right the big boys in scarlet welcome the little scarlet knights cj is going to go off and mccord gets the third and McCord gets the third with Devin Brown in the fourth. Okay, third quarter. Um, the defensive, the defense shall feast, and I predict the defensive ends get home for four sacks finally this week. I think how many do they have on the season right now? Like one. Um, on offense, I see Fleming fact. I see the Fleming factor happening as this will be his game. The offensive line bullies, and the running backs continue running strong. Uh, but the passing game opens up further because Rutgers. We crease 80. His final score prediction is 84 to three. Damn. That is an 81 point. So he's he's saying he's going to. He saw the spread at 40 and said, nah, double it. <laughs> double that shit. <laughs> Um, oh, that's what, funny. What do, you, what do you what do you think the total number of sacks the defensive ends have so far this year, Jared? I, I said one. Anybody else want to guess here? Anybody else want to guess before I before I say it out loud? How many sacks do the defensive ends have this year so far? And no Google searching. <laughs> Three, says, two, two. Two, if you count. Yeah, of course you, you count JJB. Yep, you do. Three. 
the answer is two and a half four. just to be different. <laughs> the answer is four. JBB has two, and Jack Sawyer has two. And then so Mike Hall has two. Eichenberg or Tommy Pickles has two, and Steel Chambers has one. Well, JJB got those sacks. He was lined up as a linebacker. No, he was lined up at Leo, which is a defensive end linebacker hybrid. Yes. So the, the defensive end side of him got those sacks for the sake of that's a fucking linebacker. Listen. No, it's not. It's a hybrid. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you guys, take it, you guys up, can, take it up you, with you guys, Jim Knowles. Hey, 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 you guys can fight it over in the chat here. We're going to move on. We're going to move on to the final score here. So I'm going to assume that all three of us picked Ohio State to win. Uh, so the final score <laughs> here. <laughs> but yeah. guys, Zach has 84 to 3, as Jared mentioned, for his final score. I will go first, Jared, and I'm going to say Ohio State scores 63 points. Just kind of like what you said. Ohio State was going to score 59 on their own for the over-under. I have Ohio State 63 and I think everybody out is going to guess what Rutgers is going to score here. 63 to 6. Kyle, it's predictable. That's immature. It is. It is. And you're going to agree. <laughs> and by the way, you're being a total homer. It's predictable, it's immature, and you're being a fucking homer. Your score prediction is ridiculous, minus 59 to 10. <laughs> all right 59 to 10 is jared's score all right we will finish up today's episode with some ask slipcast questions and of course our very own austin does not disappoint us this week he has some austin over and unders and he starts off saying you already know what time it is so he starts off strong here, Jared. Stroud passing touchdowns, four and a half. Buddy, buddy, buddy. You got to take the over on that one. My only I, fear... It, 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 it goes with what, what my theme is in, in this game here. I think Ohio State is just going to come out passing, just going to just continue working on those receivers, continue creating that it relationship. Awesome. Creating those, yeah, five is a lot, yes. It, but, I mean, Stroud is just monster right now. 15 touchdowns already through four games. 15. That's okay, ridiculous. Hold on, what's that average? Um, 15 divided by four, so just under four. And where's the over-under set? It's at four and a half. Listen, my fear, my fear here, my fear here. My fear this here. Is 16, I'm, I'm sorry. He has 16 touchdowns. I'm sorry. It's exactly four. It is exactly four. I'm sorry. Which is still one less than the goddamn number. Which is it? Yeah, he has to get five. My fear <laughs> here, and I'm just enjoying saying fear here. My fear here is that they there's only going to be so many touchdowns by the starters. So what happens if just through the circumstances of the games, the running backs get a bunch of those early touchdowns? Well, then then, then I lose the bet. <laughs> Kyle, then, that, is, then, then, that is a very mature take. I'm going to need <laughs> you to be more reactionary and less mature. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go under here. Uh, I just feel like five is a ton. Five's a ton. And like I said, if, if the running backs take up too many of those early touchdowns, he just won't be on the field that long. Okay. You, okay. You said you, you made the whole argument about, well, the average oh, guys, the, the average is only four per game here, but you know what his average is the past two games is games is five and five, five. I'm just saying, I don't think he's going to be in this game that long and just five. the, the likelihood that the running backs he get shouldn't, he, he shouldn't have been versus Arkansas State. 
shouldn't have been against Toledo, and he shouldn't have been in that long against Wisconsin too. But you know what? Here we are, and he's throwing up great passes going into the fourth quarter. May see that again here. Give me the over on that. All right, he could trade. get five. I would leave the number alone personally. I agree with that, Austin. Mm -hmm. He could easily get five, but it's just tough. Exactly. I'm just saying there's 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 too many scenarios in which he doesn't. Yeah, there there, there is. But you know, me being a homer, I'm sticking. I'm, I'll go with over. All right, uh, Trey Henderson. Travion Henderson carries at 14 and a half. For somebody that in the chat here posted the most carries he had in a game, <laughs> it was Austin. Of, of, course of course it was Austin. Of course it was Austin, yeah. <laughs> most carries he had in one game this year so far has been 14. Mm -hmm. 14 yards. Under. Oh, not 14 yards. I'm sorry, 14 carries. I'm, I'm looking here. No, it's not. He he had more. He had more than that. He had more for. He had 15 against Notre Dame. He had 10 against Arkansas State. Four against Toledo, and then 21. He had 21 against Wisconsin. Maybe you're thinking of um, Chop, perhaps. Thinking of somebody else. So average. So he's averaging was it 50 divided by four? So, ooh, that's a good number. That's a good number. I'm 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 going to say under. I'll say under just because I again going with my theme here. I think Ohio State's going to go pass heavy in this game. Just to yeah, I don't need to repeat myself here. I'll go under. While I think he goes over, I'm still going to pick under. And again, like maybe Mayan Williams gets the hot hand. Maybe they get a bunch of long plays, and therefore the total number of carries doesn't rack up that high. Maybe he doesn't play in this game at all. Maybe they have him on still a very limited pitch count because of, you know, maybe working through an injury and it's just Rutgers and fuck it. You know, hey, he's a little bit hurt still. He just had 21 carries against Ru or against Wisconsin. Eh, if, if we get out, go ahead. And if we get out ahead early, don't give him too many carries. Um, I. And I'm not saying he doesn't. In fact, I think he does. But I, again, I think there's too many scenarios in which he doesn't. So yeah. I'm going to go under. All right. Ohio State forced interceptions at one and a half. What is it here? So Rutgers has thrown two interceptions all year in four games. Four. And the over under is one and a half. Four. Four. The starting quarterback is thrown two. The backup is also thrown two. That is true. Okay, so the average is to one a game. Uh, yeah, I'll go under. Yeah, this I, this, I, I, this I saw, defense. I seen, yeah, I haven't really seen this defense really, really create turnovers so far uh, this year, and I just, I just don't see that happening in this game here. So I'm, I'll say under. Yeah. Um. It's because here's the problem is he limits it straight to interceptions. If this were turnovers, I might go over. But since he's limiting it yes. strictly to interceptions, I'll go under. I agree 100 percent with that. Tackle for loss by defensive tackles or corners at three and a half. I'm going to go over with this one. I'll go over. I really like our defensive tackles. I think he'll get a lot of pressure. Well, especially with a uh, with big old with a big old hall right in the middle there, going to plug in the hole, possibly disrupt some plays, get the running back beyond the line of scrimmage there. I really really like uh, my odds here at over three and a half. Buckeye Esquire says I really like the defensive tackle slash corner grouping. Here's the thing, it's it's not slash, it's or. That this is the part that's kind of throwing me. It's that it's or you, you, you did put or. Oh, you Austin, did. you're saying it should be both. OK, it says defensive tackles or corners. OK, I, I but think... it, well, you would say and. <laughs> it still implies Jared's both. being nitpicky here, Austin. 
Well, the lawyer says it still implies both. I don't think it does. And I know you're the lawyer and I'm not, but anyway. Okay, so so we are, it is combined. It is yes. combined. So whatever, we, we now have clarity that it is combined. Um, I will go over. I'll, right. I'll go over. Tackles by the safeties at 17 and a half. It's a lot. So he's saying Hickman, McAllister, Proctor, Williams, Styles, Stokes, Johnson, and Ransom. 17 and a half tackles. That's, that's a lot. I'm going, going to say under. Um, under. It's not actually a lot, Austin says. Those guys average 19. I'll still go with under. Um, I'm going to go under as well. Um, actually going to have to complete passes. <laughs> yeah, it, I will. Here's the thing. I just don't think that again, I have very little faith in this Rutgers offense. I don't see that many guys getting to the safeties. I don't see them completing a ton of passes when they do complete passes. I think they're going to be little chippy underneath passes, which are often cleaned up you know, by the wide receiver, or excuse me, by the cornerbacks and the linebackers. Um, I don't see any of their runs at any point <laughs> getting to the second level to the point where you'd need a safety. Um, I, I think, I don't know if there'll be any tackles left for the safeties. So I'm going to go under. Yeah. All right. Ohio State first quarter points at 20 and a half. Now, if Ohio State gets the ball first, I'm taking the yeah. Over. That's that's the problem here. <laughs> Ohio State gets the ball first, take the over. I'm still good. Now, I'm now, good. If you, now, now, if you say Ohio State first half at like 34 and a half points in the first half, I think that would be a good a good number there. I mean, that's still dependent upon the the coin toss, though. Just I know, I know that's not, the, I know that's not the question, but you know, I'll, I'll go under just because more likely to score three touchdowns in the opening quarter. And if you don't get the ball first, that's, that makes it a lot more difficult unless you get the turnover or <clears throat> you get, you get a, a return touchdown somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go under here, but you, you I, want... I think this, I think the second quarter is going to be monstrous though. I'm going to go over. I think it'll be all first quarter again this week. So I'll go over. All right. All right. And tight end catches because it is just Yody. like every year, Jared. It is no. year of the tight end. Not just like every year, because I think this year it's not a joke. <laughs> Three and a half catches. Um, I'm, I'll go. I'll go over on this. I feel like this, by the way, might be the game that maybe G Scott gets a few. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go over on this. All right. I'll go over as well. We we, we got to we got to support our tight ends here. Let's get the over. Let's get the over. He says tight ends average three. Yeah, this, right. does, this feels like a bit of a tight and, end game, though. It just it just kind of does because it, it right, does feel like a game in which Rutgers is going to go like deep shell force Ohio state to throw underneath. I feel like they're, they're going to go straight to the book for Ohio state. Wisconsin tried to not play the book in the first quarter. They tried to blitz their linebackers. They tried to get pass coverage. Um, Wisconsin tried to say, no, nah, we're better than the book. And then they failed. Uh, yeah. I don't think Rutgers is under any delusion that they're, then they're better than the, the, the typical strategy against Ohio state. So I think they'll, I think they'll go soft shell force a lot of stuff underneath at least early. Uh, and that's that's good for Stover's numbers. Yep. All right. And we have one last question from Kabuto, who I guess he's not here. So I guess his one percent is gone. Uh, uh, <laughs> R.I.P. <says>, Kabuto's phone. <laughs> what's more likely? Uh, Mayan Williams goes pro after this year or Trey and Mayan split carries next year as well. And so he did does, ask, he did ask, wait, can mine even go pro? Yes. This yes, is his can. third year. I yes. think he goes pro. I think so too. He's putting up crazy numbers already this year. And that's a part of a split. Um, his average 
what what is his average right now, Kyle? Do you have that ready? I can, I can look I can look it up if if not. I can look it up too. Well, okay, okay, I guess we're racing then. I guess we're racing. Uh we are. He is averaging seven point two point two carry. I said point two earlier. Yeah, but what point two? <laughs> Shut up. I finished it. <laughs> seven point two. That's yeah, that is that is ridiculous. Dallin yeah, that Hayden at 5.2 and Henderson yeah. at 6.4 in case anyone else was wondering. All right, that is all the questions here, Jared. Uh, we've got but Kathy, our, but Kathy is currently our, averaging a 9.5. Uh, we, <laughs> we got to know our enemy. We got to know um, some stats here, some matchups. We got to do our picks here, answer some questions. I think that's an episode. I think that is an episode um tonight's ending music uh nope too early for that too early for that i want to uh ask everyone to check out the sloopcast.com there you can find links to all of our things um i want you to check out our patreon um if you become a patron that gives you premium access to our discord server now the discord server is free it is public but there is a premium section to it uh for example uh there's like a premium recruiting section to it and also this live chat that you see everyone participating in, in the voice room that they're joined to, you do have to be a paid member to be a part of this, to listen to us live and to the Kyle saying hi down there and to put, put gifts into our, into our episodes for all of the Google people, or excuse me, all the, uh, I mean, it is Google, but all the YouTube people to see, you can, uh, join us at, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com and discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, Everything, everything is Google, to be honest. Yeah, but YouTube's literally owned by Google. So not everything, because like some things are Amazon and some things are Apple and there are other things. Not not enough other things, if we're being honest. Because <laughs> then like some things are Facebook and then that's basically it. And that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Disney. Well, that's that's a different end of the spectrum. Not really, though. Listen, the the the, 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 the it's it's all it's anyway. We're moving forward. Uh, so yeah, visit us on YouTube, the aforementioned YouTube, the aforementioned Instagram. Because I said Facebook. Now, Jared, are you actually on Facebook? You might be asking. No, we are not on Facebook. But we are on Twitter, oh. we are on TikTok, we are on Instagram, uh, and like I said, we're on Patreon. Uh, but if you really want to interact with us, if you really want to talk to us, ask us questions, say hi to us, Discord is your way to go. That's where Kyle and I spend most of our time uh, in the Discord server. If you don't know what a Discord server is, it's just a it's a big old group chat. It's like a it's like a it's like a private little social media hole. That you can climb into. You don't want to be out in the big, scary public Twitter sphere where it's crazy and toxic and not at all moderated. Well, you can come into the safe little cave that Kyle and I have carved out into the Internet. And that's that's what the Discord server is. Yes, sir. And where emphasis, we get to share, emphasis we get to, on the whole. <laughs> yeah, we get to share some news. So I'll go into uh, Kyle's corner real quick here. Sure. Just just barge your way in. I am. I just learned some some sad news here, no. especially especially some people who um, knew him from the um, some of his '90s songs. We, we lost it. We lost a singer this um, today here. Uh, most notably, song uh, "Gangsters Paradise." Coolio passed away. I was just thinking about Coolio the other day. Yep. That, that is, is sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's saying that um, media found out uh, that he passed away in, in L.A. No, nothing more at the, at this point here. But yeah, that that sucks. That's sucks to hear. Indeed, um, I, I have had no additional comments. Unfortunately, yeah, it it, it always sucks. These things suck. Um. So yeah, today's ending music uh, will still be Signals Midwest. 
uh, because Coolio song would definitely get us in trouble with the copyright lords. <laughs> so yes. uh, we'll be playing an episode of Signals Midwest and uh, or an episode, a song by the band Signals Midwest. That's what we're actually doing, if I can speak correctly. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters once again. This is Signals Midwest. <laughs>